Well, this is just contributes to the number of discoveries that Voyager has been making. And this is one we'd hoped we would have the chance to do. And fortunately, the Spose spacecraft were still operating when they reached interstellar space. It's really quite, uh, quite remarkable. Voyager 1 crossed this boundary uh, six years ago. So this is now quite a different time in, in this uh, cycle of solar activity. Uh, it's also a rather different place. Voyager 1 was up north in the northern hemisphere. Voyager 2 is down and to the left in the, uh, in the southern hemisphere. So they're in different hemispheres even. So there's no real connection between what we saw up here with Voyager 1 and what we're seeing down on the flank of the bubble uh, on Voy with Voyager 2. We launched two Voyager spacecraft. They were basically the same, uh, but they were on different paths. Voyager 2 was the one that was chosen to do the grand tour, that is to fly by Jupiter and then Saturn and then Uranus and then Neptune. And that's what Voyager 2 did between 1979 and 1989. Uh, and then after 1989, we f finished flying by Neptune, we be began what was called, what is now called the Voyager Interstellar Mission because we were on a path we hoped to get to reach interstellar space while we still had power on the spacecraft to transmit the data back. And that's what Voyager 1 did in uh, 2012, and that's now what Voyager 2 is starting to do in uh, 2018. For me personally, it's a, to have this, this milestone event happen, it's, it's a relief. Wow, we, we got the spacecraft there, we made it. But it's also very exciting. I mean, just, just think of it. We now have two spacecraft. There's uh, traveling out past uh, you know, the effects of our sun and into interstellar space. Uh, there's no definitive target next. Or they're going to keep operating for at least five more years, each of them. And, uh, you know, after they go silent, they just become uh, a silent ambassador around the center of our galaxy with that gold record, too. You know, they were launched in 1977. That's, that's a long time ago. That's, uh, we say 41 years, but it's really two, two generations ago. Uh, you can think of what the technology was in, in 1977 and, and what the technology is today. You know, your, your smartphone has, has uh, more than 200,000 times uh, more memory than what the Voyager spacecraft have. I think it was always a dream, but not something that they necessarily thought they could get accomplished. I mean, think about that. These spacecraft have been flying for 41 years. They're both still operating. The original mission was a four-year mission to Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, Voyager 2 was fortunate enough to be able to go not only to Jupiter and Saturn, but also to Uranus and Neptune, and uh, continue on another 28 years past that point, past that Neptune encounter, to reach it now uh, out into interstellar space.